Hi everyone, welcome to this bit of a different video. Um, something interesting happened to me the other day and I thought it'd be worthwhile making a, a video out of it as it's provided me with quite a lot of entertainment. Um, I've got two wine glasses here which are supposed to be identical but uh, whilst I was washing one up the other day after a nice night in I, uh, I tonked the glass up against the, uh, the tap and I put a big crack in it. Now it's not the worst crack and obviously the glass isn't shattered but it's now totally useless to me. Uh, as a wine glass, but as it turns out, it now has some uh, different interesting properties. Now, as you probably know, um, you've probably done it at a party or something like that. Uh, if you're bored, you can um, take any uh, relatively thin walled uh, glass, wine glass, and by running your finger around the top, you can make the glass vibrate and produce a note, and uh, that's what we'll do. That's quite a pure, clean note, and it's uh, quite nice to listen to. But if I, uh, if we give it a go with the uh, the broken glass, um, you should be able to hear quite a distinct difference. Give it another go. And we should be able to hear there is obviously it's producing different notes, but it's also producing two different notes in alternation. So one note then the other, a higher and then a lower note. And that depends where my finger is on the glass. So clearly adding this crack has, um, has made it so that depending on where I'm touching on the glass, I'm vibrating the glass in different ways, producing different frequencies. I've got the cameras focused on the, uh, the very rims of the glasses here, as I think uh, that's probably gonna be the most interesting area to look at, but we might change camera angles in a bit when we add some water to the glasses. If you don't already know, whenever you play supposedly a pure note on, on anything, uh, be that a wine glass or, or a musical instrument, there is, there is that one pure note which you're playing, but you're likely playing a whole heap of other frequencies and notes on top of it, and they're called harmonics. Uh, these harmonics are what make different instruments sound different to each other. I mean, a, a trumpet and a violin could play the same note but they don't sound different whatsoever. And that's to do with the range of different harmonics on top of the fundamental, but also uh, the ratios and the different strengths of those fundamental, of those uh, harmonic frequencies on top of that pure uh, key note, which is what is referred to when you play a particular note, say in, uh, a middle C or something like that. That's a particular frequency, but the other harmonics on top of it is what defines the sound of an instrument. Uh, if we compare these two glasses again, I think their, their frequency range is still somewhat similar, but um, it's clear that they don't produce the same notes anymore. And that's obviously because of this crack. Now the crack seems to have made it so that depending on where you're touching the glass, you can uh, create different uh, vibrations and therefore different frequencies. You can look it up online, I'll put some links down below, but the, the way in which a wine glass actually vibrates to make the noise is that as you drag your finger, around the glass, you're actually uh, getting your finger to stick and slip um, very, very quickly. And that's why you need just the right mix of water on your finger and just the right amount of pressure to get it to happen. Um, because that sticking and slipping needs to be just right to constantly perturb or, or jerk the edge of the glass. And that's what makes the whole thing vibrate. Now, what's also interesting to, uh, to note is the way in which the wine glass vibrates. If you're looking down directly on the top of this glass and you could view it in uh, slow motion, and I do recommend you go check out some videos of this because there's, there's quite a few of them. What you'd see is you'd see the, uh, the rim of the glass starting off circular and then as it vibrates, it kind of uh, bends into this shape, into an oval that way, and then back the other way, and then out and then in, and then out and then in, and that back and forth. And it's that vibration in and out which causes the air to vibrate and causes the frequency, uh, causes the note to be the particular note. You can change that frequency and therefore change the note by adding water to the glass. So the more water you add, the lower the note. Now this is because as you add water, you're essentially increasing um, mass and weight inside the glass. So as, it, as the vi glass vibrates, you um, change the amount of mass the glass has to move every time it vibrates, every time it moves backwards and forwards. This, uh, this means that it's going to take longer to do each vibration because it has more momentum to move backwards and forwards. 
and therefore you end it with a lower note. What's interesting to note, aha, note, is that uh, the surface of the water vibrates and has little standing wave patterns on it. I also recommend you check out what a standing, standing wave is, they're pretty interesting. Since the water is being vibrated by the glass in kind of a closed environment, you get patterns of ripples on the water. And what I'll do is I'll change the camera angle to get a better look at this. All right, we've rearranged the camera angle to hopefully get a better view of uh, what's going on, on the surface of the liquid when we uh, make the glass sing. So we'll give that a go now. We've got quite tight focus on the, uh, on the liquid level, but I, I might swap that around in a second once we fill the glass with even more water. All right, let's fill it up even more and see, uh, well, it's gonna change the note, but let's see whether or not the, it changes the wave pattern at all as well. All right, if we uh, fill the glass any more of this, the, it starts to sing very, very low notes and also starts to um, not be able to sing very well at all. Um, so this is essentially as high as we can go, but we get some pretty good results. Now, I, I, th I thought this might be the case just from uh, thinking about it, but I think it's the, the rim of the glass which vibrates the most, and therefore the higher the liquid level, the closer it is to the, to the rim, and therefore the bigger the ripples that we get on the surface. What's also interesting to note is that where we have the biggest vibrations and the lowest vibrations, it seems to move round in a circular pattern uh, with my finger. These areas where we have no vibration are called nodes, and uh, due to the standing wave being set up on the surface. These uh, nodes are where you get uh, deconstructive interference, and therefore all the waves which are traveling around cancel out in that particular area. And then the opposite is true for the areas where we have the most vibration, that's the anti-nodes. These anti-nodes are where you get the most uh, movement from the glass and therefore the most waves, and these are clearly moving around with my finger. To do a bit of extra analysis, I thought I'd take a couple of extra recordings, one of the intact glass and one of the broken glass. I've imported them here into Audacity, which is a great general recording program, and it's also got some handy features for doing acoustic analysis like we're about to do. This is the waveform for the intact glass, and as you can see, there are peaks and troughs in the amplitude of the signal. And if we have a listen to it, you can clearly hear This might have been the cause and the reason for why those ripples faded in and out. It might not have been the case that they were following my finger around. Uh, another interesting thing you can do here is you can uh, switch to the spectrograph view. And if we, uh, we zoom out of the image, you can see that there are many, many different uh, harmonics being played on top of what's down here, the fundamental frequency, this white line. And they get fainter as you go up in frequency, but they're all there, which gives it this very much kind of multifaceted, otherworldly sound. We can zoom in on uh, this lower section here. And this bright white line is the fundamental, the kind of lowest and loudest note. And you can see it's round about here at maybe 520 hertz, which isn't too far from a, uh, a C5, or the, uh, the C, which is an octave above a middle C. Um, and then you can see above that, if we scroll back out, that the harmonics are roughly every 500 hertz above that. So just above 500, then just above 1,000, and so on and so forth, all the way up. It's very much a different story if we look at the broken glass, however. This is the waveform for the broken glass. You can see it's much more jagged on the tops. So it's not quite as clean. And that's apparent if you listen back. Again, we do have the oscillating kind of... Uh, amplitude of the signal, that stays. Although when we look in the spectrograph view, it's a totally different image. To start with, it's hugely more noisy. Gone are the uh, discrete um, lines which indicate all the different harmonics. Instead, we have many, many different lines indicating a whole heap of different frequencies all playing at the same time. 
One thing we do have in common though is that there's still a fundamental frequency and it's still much louder than the rest of the harmonics as indicated by the kind of the bright white here rather than the purple or the blue. Zooming in is where it gets even more interesting. Here we can clearly see our two separate frequencies, the, uh, the two alternating notes which we mentioned earlier in the video. Zooming in again we can see that they alternate. Interestingly enough as well, the, the higher frequency is still right around 520 Hz, which is uh, just the same as what it was for the intact glass, but with this bonus frequency down here at, in the, at the bottom, uh, alternating with the high one, plus all this heap of mess, uh, which we've got everywhere else, which is why it doesn't sound like a kind of clear crystal note, just like the intact glass. Another useful feature of Audacity is that you can export all the data about uh, the frequencies um, being played in any kind of sample and that's what I've done here. This is all the heaps of data for the intact glass, the broken glass, uh, the high note in the broken glass and the low note in the broken glass. And you can obviously using Excel make it graphs of this. It's clear to see all the different frequencies um, within the spectrograph of the intact glass. Each peak here is one of those harmonics and this lowest one being the fundamental frequency. And you can see that they it peaks really quite high. If I scroll down, you can see this is the high note of the broken glass. And we've still got this fundamental frequency in the same place, but it quickly descends into a load of mess down the lower end. And then for the low note, it gets even worse. Although it could be uh, argued that we've got some of these extra frequencies still remaining in this recording, as opposed to this one. Overlaying those on top of each other, you can see the difference between the two. So this is the intact glass in blue mixed with the uh, the broken high note um, in the fractured glass. And you can see there is some matching of some of the harmonics. So the fundamental here, the first, second, maybe the third, this one seems to be a good match. But you can see that all these other frequencies are really drowning out in the vast majority where the uh, harmonics are. So it gets very difficult to tell. And the low note is even worse. The uh, noise and all these other extra frequencies are entirely uh, drowning out anywhere where these harmonics might um, come in and appear in the waveform. We're just not going to be able to see them. So it's clear that by, uh, by fracturing the glass, you don't entirely change its characteristics, but you do add a whole heap of other frequencies into the spectrograph. Uh, into the kind of frequency range that the glass produces when you run your finger around it. And therefore, um, you kind of both add and take away to the, to the character of the glass. Hope you found this interesting. Thanks and bye.